Hi there! In today's video, I would like to show you how I created my own chat GPT. Now, I didn't train my own language model or anything fancy like that. Although, I guess you could say that I did that, kind of. I used the OpenAI API to do this. Now, as far as I know, and I don't know much, there is no API for ChatGPT. But you can use the OpenAI API to do text completion. So let me show you first how my ChatGPT or ChatWTF works. So first I can say, hi, what's your name? My name is the magnificent ChatWTF. Can you write a PHP code that fetches something from an API? And here we have the result. The code to fetch something from an API using PHP would look like this. And then it provides the code. And it also knows context, so I can tell it, can you change it to a simpler version? And then it will change the code to use the file get contents function. Now this particular chatbot is geared towards programming. So I can ask something like, how would you do that in Rust. And then it will wait for a while and it will give me the answer. Here it is. Here's how to do it in Rust. Now I don't know Rust so I don't know if this will work, but it will tell it. I can also say, how about C++. And here we have the method to do it in C++. Now I can also ask something like, what was my first question? And <laughs> he says, you asked, hi, what's your name? So now let me show you how I did this. It's very easy actually. So at first I started to do this with Python because in the OpenAI documentation they have an example with Python. And you can just install the Python OpenAI library by running pip install OpenAI. Now I have it already here so nothing happens. But then first we have to of course set the hash bang and then we have to import the OpenAI library and we have to set the API key. Right now it's getting the API key from this file. And you can get the API key from beta.openai.com. I will show you later how you can do that. And then we just create an infinite loop. And in the infinite loop we ask the question. And when we get the question we pass it into the OpenAI API. And then we format the response because the new lines are escaped like this. And then we print out the response. Now this will work already. If I go here and I run my chat.py it will ask, what is your question? And I can ask, how do I write a PHP code that adds two numbers together? And then we wait for a while, and another while, and another while. And then ultimately it will spit out an answer. And I will tell you why it's so slow and what we can do about it. All right, now it spat out this answer, which is very long. So it said, PHP to get the answer to parse JSON in PHP. PHP is useful for creating dynamic web pages. What? It's just creating this essay from PHP. But that's not what we want. And the reason for this is that I used the Da Vinci engine. The real engine that you have to use is the text Da Vinci 003, which is the GPT-3 engine. So if I save this and I run the script again, now we should have something better. So if I ask, how can I add two numbers together in PHP. It will say, you can add two numbers together in PHP by using the addition operator, plus, for example. Or I can ask it, how do I make a get request in JavaScript? And it will provide the answer. Now, this doesn't know anything about context, so if I ask, can I use jQuery instead? Then it's gonna say, what? It says, yes, you can use jQuery instead of plain JavaScript, as long as you are able to use the jQuery correctly. What? <laughs> so now, how do we fix this? How do we get some context to this? Well, we will do this. First, we have to save the old question and the old response. And of course, we have to initialize the variables up here. And then we will append the old response and the old question to the new prompt. And then we will set the full prompt to the old prompts and the new question. And of course we have to change here to full prompt. And we will tell it to please use questions and answers above as context for the answer, just to be sure. And we will add it after the new question. And of course we have to initialize this variable up here 
and the old prompts variable. And now if we run this again and we say, how can I make a get request in JavaScript? It will tell us how to do it. You can use the built-in XML HTTP request object or the fetch API. And now if I say, can I use jQuery? It will say, yes, you can also use jQuery to make a get request. And here's the code. Now, this is already pretty good, but we can make it better. We will set a default prompt that says, act as an AI mentor for a programmer by answering the questions provided. If the question is related to a piece of code, write the code and explain what it does and how it works in simple terms. And we will also say, format the code in markdown format so that the code can be distinguished from it easily. And we'll also say, please also explain the steps involved. Don't only tell the code to use. Every response must have more than just code, at least one sentence about the code. And this is because sometimes if you just use the Da Vinci, it will just print out the code and no explanation. And then just for fun, I added this. If you're asked for your identity, say that your name is the magnificent chat WTF. And then to make it even better, we will initialize an example question and answer so that it knows what kind of answers we are expecting. And let's add another question there as well, just to be sure. And let's add a way that we can exit without doing control C. So now let's see how this works. If I open the terminal again and I run this again and I say, can you create a shopping cart class in PHP? It will say, yes, you can create a shopping cart class in PHP. To do so, you would need to create a class that contains all the necessary functions for managing a shopping cart, such as adding items, calculating totals, and managing discounts. And then here we have a shopping cart class. Great. Now I can then ask, can you add a method to it that will print out an HTML table of the shopping cart? And then it will tell you how to do it, but it only added the <laughs> print table method. But then I can say, can you add to the print table method the actual code for creating the HTML? And after about 30 seconds of waiting, we get this code. And here we have print table and it will print the actual HTML table. Great, so now it works. Now, of course, this is just a Python script that runs in the terminal, but we want a real website. So let's do that. So I created this boilerplate HTML here. We just have a H1 here and a div for the chat messages and a message input and some script. And here, this style sheet and this script is for the code highlighting with highlight.js. And here I have my own style sheet. And here I just created some basic styling Actually, I made this with ChatGPT. And then up here, we will create the script for this. So first we get the message input and the message list elements from the DOM. And then we set the context to nothing or an empty array. And then we add an event listener to when we press enter on the chat message. And when that happens, we will add a message to the message list and we will send the message. And in the send message function, we will get the question and we will add a new incoming message with a blinking cursor to the message list. And then we will set the message input to empty. Then we will make a post request to message.php and we will add the message and the context to this post. And then after we get the response, if it's successful, so then we update the message from the blinking cursor into the actual message. And then we add the question and the answer to the context and we focus the message input again. And then here we just implement the add message function, which just adds a message to the message list. And here is the update message function that will just update the message text. And then we just add some code highlighting. And then on the PHP side, we'll first require all the dependencies and we will set the content type header and we will get the context and initialize the OpenAI API. And then we will set the default prompt and then we will add the context to the prompt. If we don't have a context, we just add the example questions and answers. But if we have a context, then we add the context to it. And the text, please use the questions and answers above for context. Then we add the current message to the prompt. And then we send the prompt to the OpenAI API. 
and then we get the message and we log it for debugging. And then we convert from Markdown to HTML so that we can get the code highlighting. And then we just return the message. So that's it. And now we will have this beautiful chat WTF here. So let's ask it some more questions. Can you create a PHP login system? Yes, you can create a PHP based login system. Now, for some reason, it did not give me the code example. In my testing, it always did it. But now, of course, when I make a video, it doesn't work. But I can, of course, ask it. Can you give me a sample code? And then it creates a sample code. So we get the posted username and password and we get a connection to the MySQL database and we get the user that has that username and password. Now, this is not a very secure way to do it, but it's a way anyway. But then we can tell it, can you make it more secure? Now, again, it did not provide me with the code sample for some reason. Let's change our prompt. Answer every programming related question with a code sample. Let's see if this makes it any better. Let's start over and try. Can you make a login system in PHP? Yes, now we got a code example. Yes, you can make a login system in PHP. Here's a basic example of the code you would use. All right. <laughs> If the database query is successful, can you provide a code that actually works? All right. Yes, here's the code that you can use to create a working login system in PHP. So if we have a username and password, then we get those and we connect to the database. And then we select the username with that password. And then if we have such username, then we have successfully logged in. Otherwise, we have not. Now, that's not the most secure way, so let's say, can you make it more secure? Yes, the code can be made more secure. To start, you can add more robust validation to the username and password fields to make sure they are correct. You can also check if the input is valid and escape any special characters to avoid SQL injection attacks. Show me the code that would be more secure. And here we get a code that hopefully, well, it filters the variables and we use password verify now. So now it's a more secure version. So let's ask some other questions. How can you make a web server in C++? Here is how you make a web server in C++. You can use the libmicro-httpd library. All right. That is cool. How about in Rust? And here's the version for Rust with the Actix web library. So it works. Now, many of you probably have already pointed out in the comments that this is not really ChatGPT. Well, that is true because ChatGPT uses a different engine than just the GPT-3. It's modified to be more conversational. But as you can see from these examples, this still works pretty well. And the thing about this is that you can actually modify the basic prompt that you give it so you can make it do something else. If instead of programming, you want to create a customer service chatbot, then maybe you could change this prompt to be the documentation for your product. And then you would say, answer questions about the product. So then you could have this on your website where your customers can ask how to do something with your product and then it will answer. Let's try and do that right now. So how should we do this? Let's create an imaginary product. This product is a website. Let's say documentation. There are three buttons on the website. One is blue, one is green, and one is yellow. The blue button will create a new project the green button will save the current project and the yellow button will close the project. If you press Ctrl X, you will get a search box where you can search for 
products in the database. If you want to create a new product, you must first call 12349876. Alright, this is the documentation for my imaginary website that does something weird. And then let's say objective answer questions that users have about the program according to the documentation above. Notice, if the question is unrelated to the documentation, tell the user that you can't answer that question. And I will take these out, maybe I don't need the <laughs> sample questions and answers here. So let's do this and let's try. So if I refresh this and I say, how do I create a new project? <laughs> to create the new project, press the blue button. I want to search for a product. To search for a product, press Ctrl X to bring up the search box. From there, you can search for the product you're looking for. I can't find the product I want. How can I create a new product? To create a new product, <laughs> you must first call. One, two, three, four. <laughs> so it works. That's amazing. What if I ask, what is the distance from the Earth to the Moon? I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't answer that question. So <laughs> now it works. So now you can use this to create a chatbot for your website that will answer your comments and you can fire all your <laughs> staff. So if you use this, please subscribe to my channel and give me a like and maybe buy me a coffee with the link in the description. And now let me show you how you can create the account for OpenAI so you can do this yourself. So first you have to go to beta.openai.com and then you have to sign up here. But now if you have used ChatGPT already, you can just log in with that account. And then once you're here, you can actually, <laughs> I can see here, ChatGPT is coming to our API soon. Sign up to stay updated. So now once you're logged in here, you can go to the menu here and you can select view API keys. And then here you can create a secret key and then you just have to put this in the API key .txt file over here. Now I will delete this so that you won't <laughs> hack me. Oh, I can't delete it. So I will blur it out. And that's all you have to do. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and please let me know in the comments what do you think and let me know if you created something useful with this. And remember to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video.